Former Atheist Subreddit, What Made You Turn to Religion? Not me, a friend of my parents. He suffered a minor heart attack during a business trip, and the moment he arrived at the hospital, he got a massive heart attack. He was clinically dead for about two minutes before he was brought back. He hasn't told anyone what he saw, and whenever someone asks, he just says I really don't want to talk about it. But from that day on, not a Sunday goes by that he doesn't show up for mass. Edit, thanks for the award everyone. To answer some of your questions, he turned to Catholicism. Don't really know the details or the reasons why, I'm just passing the story along. He really hasn't talked to anyone about what he saw. Maybe it was a mere hallucination, maybe a vision of heaven, maybe hell. I don't really know. Far as I remember, he's never told anyone about it. I hope he's doing all right. One of my uncles had a massive heart attack and was clinically dead for a bit as well. Something about what he experienced in dying and being brought back prompted him to look at how my aunt, a lifelong devout Catholic, finds faith so important, and he went from being an atheist slash apatheist to getting confirmed himself. He's really doing well, physically and as a whole person, and though I'm no longer Catholic, or an atheist, I am genuinely happy for him. Upvoted because nobody ever knows what I mean when I say I'm an apatheist. Near-death experiences certainly convert a lot of people. Collects a bunch of them, for anyone interested. Web link. From my understanding, when a person gets close to death it's under for nothing. This is interesting to read on a Friday night. Not just any Friday night. A good Friday night. I was actually born on Good Friday, so... Wow, welcome to the world little dude. As an atheist, I agree. Not here to mock, here to see some interesting comments, I hope. As a Christian, I also agree. While there are thousands of mocking comments, there are even more interesting discussions. It's rare to see actual discussion on Reddit, even more so regarding religion. You don't know desperation until you start praying as an atheist. Yeah the darkest day of my life was when I was at a work conference for my new job and I got a few messages and calls that my best friend died. I was in such a bad state, hysterically crying, just a complete heap of despair. I pulled out a Bible to help and I just wanted someone, anyone there. Pure desperation. I lost a close friend last month. It's effin sucks, I don't think I'm dealing with it well, but who does? I'm sorry for your loss and I hope you're hanging in there. I'm in the same boat. My buddy was such a kind, caring and gentle soul and he died suddenly in a car crash in February. It has sent me down a mental health spiral and raised so many existential questions. I have a small friend group to begin with, and out of all my friends he was the guy I connected with the most and it felt like we were brothers. I knew him for more than half of my life and he helped shape me into the person I am today, so there are reminders of him everywhere around me. You don't truly see the effect someone has on your life and the lives of those around them until they're gone. Nothing people can say really helps, but I hope you're doing all right and working through the difficult times. Thank you so much, I hope you are getting on okay, it cuts like a knife still. Oh man that is terrible. I hope you're doing better now. I really wish I could become religious. Must be really nice to have a faith. Yeah. I'll never forget riding to the graveside with my grandfather after my grandmother died. He was an atheist and just as we were about to get out of the car he said, I really envy people with faith. They think this isn't the end. I would like to strongly believe in an afterlife like the one designed on the good place. Only with actual ice cream, not frozen yogurt. Would be nice seeing all your loved ones again. Really can't judge people for wanting to believe in that. I'm agnostic and honestly, maybe we will. Who knows what happens after the lights go out. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe there is an afterlife. Maybe there is something we would never have conceived. Either way, love the people you have while you have them. There are those who believe that we experience multiple lives, who's to say that isn't true. Regardless, the life you have now is what's in front of us. As you said, love the people around that are with you now. That concept was what made me religious when I was 13 and my mom died. 
I was religious until my early 20s and I've been atheist for about 10 years now. I often think about how I wish I could believe I could see my mom again because that's a much easier thing to accept than the idea that nothing can change the fact that she will never meet my wife and kids. The only thing that bugs me about being an agnostic atheist is that there isn't divine justice. Sometimes it would be nice to believe that the worst people won't get away with committing atrocities. But as an agnostic atheist you can realize that ultimately people are just a product of random processes in the universe and that while we still need a justice system for rehabilitation, deterrence, and protection, no one really deserves to suffer, especially not for an eternity. On the other hand, this creates a desire to create more accountability, rather than letting bad people get away with crap because God will judge them. If you start committing serious crimes, you best believe I want justice to be served, because 99.99999% it won't occur in an afterlife, regardless of one's beliefs. I could not agree more. This. Bad days make me want to believe in something. I've always thought so too. It looks like it would be very comforting. When my partner's father passed away, his funeral was held at his church where he was a devout deacon. It was my first time ever attending church, I was raised non-religious, don't even consider myself agnostic or atheist because religion was a complete non-factor, and didn't know what to expect. But the service was honestly very moving even if I didn't understand most of it. My partner is not particularly religious, but seeing the comfort the church sermon and community brought him in his darkest moment was invaluable. I was raised the same as you. I call myself agnostic now, because who knows, but for most of my life until 20-ish I just wasn't anything. I've been to a few services where the deceased was very involved in the church and they are beautiful. Seeing how much they meant to everyone, including the pastor slash minister slash imam slash rabbi slash whatever really comes through and it seems so personal. The flip side is when I've had grandparents pass away who weren't religious at all, as far as I could tell, and some unknown priest is found to speak and all they do is talk about Jesus and salvation. I'm here to remember my nan, not hear how great this guy Jesus apparently was. The flip side is when I've had grandparents pass away who weren't religious at all, as far as I could tell, and some unknown priest is found to speak and all they do is talk about Jesus and salvation. I'm here to remember my nan, not hear how great this guy Jesus apparently was. My buddy passed away a couple years ago and this was kind of, what happened at his funeral. I was pretty peeved during the whole ordeal. If he was religious I would have been fine with it, but he was like beyond atheist and more anti-religion than anything. His mom was super religious which is why he hated religion. Was a weird moment for me because on one hand the funeral is supposed to honor the dead, which that crap was not doing since there's no way he would have wanted that. On the other hand, he was effing dead so it didn't really matter and this was the funeral his mom wanted, and if that's how she wanted to do it she deserved at least that. I ended up going outside and smoking during the long religious part and figured that was the right thing to do since I didn't believe in it and I knew he didn't either. For the record I don't really care what people believe, but I hate when people use that crap to justify being a crafty person. Not really, a hot take, but those people just make the whole thing leave a bad taste in my mouth. When I was very young my brain literally kicked me out of my faith and never let me back in and I still have panic attacks about death and even concepts of eternity and entropy and just the sheer pointlessness of it all. People don't realize that some aren't snubbing religion because they don't want to believe in hell or some nonsense. I would give almost anything to know that I won't cease to exist. Having someone that's omnipotent to rely on is really good when trying to cope with something, trying to summon courage or determination or something like these. My life hit rock bottom. I was constantly anxious, constantly searching for peace. I took up meditation and found myself praying. Eventually a co-worker invited me to their weekly church dinner and over many months, I found myself a regular member. For those thinking I joined the Westboro Baptist Church or something, I am a member of an independent church that broke off from the Methodist Church specifically over the conservative policies they instituted. As an agnostic, this is one thing I can appreciate about religions, and that is the sense of community. I was raised in a church and loved attending, because I enjoyed the feeling of community, even though I can't claim I was ever a true believer. For a lot of people, that sense of community and belonging can be much more meaningful and impactful to their lives than any of the actual religious teachings. Either way, I'm glad it's helped improve your life. 
I was brought to the Methodist Church by my neighbors as a kid, I was raised loosely Catholic before this, and they were so much more of a community than the Catholic Church in my area. I never really believed, but everyone was nice and very supportive after my mother passed. Eventually my dad wound up joining and he does so much with them now. I did my confirmation in the Methodist Church mostly for him. I enjoyed volunteering and doing non-crafty mission trips, like a Habitat for Humanity trip where we helped restore an historic house that the owners couldn't afford to fix, or helping run a day-slash-after-school program for local kids. I'm still not anything close to religious, but I am glad that the town has that church. They do so much. Also, I was pretty clear that as I got older, I didn't believe, but they never really gave me a hard time about it. I was still in their community and putting my time and energy into church programs like helping cook and serve at the special lunches and dinners, sometimes singing in choir, helping set up tables and chairs for youth groups, things like that. I just did it because I didn't need Jesus to tell me that people need help and did it anyway, and that was enough for them. I appreciated that a lot, because what I needed most often was the community. Also got brought up in the Methodist Church. I was confirmed but I'm certainly not a believer. I think I had moved on from the church and religion in general by the time I started college. One of the things I'll take with me is the spirit of service that I experienced. Our youth group was involved with a program that would go fix up houses and properties in Appalachia, for folks that couldn't do it themselves. Painting, building decks, roofing, mowing. No religion involved between us and them, just lending another human in need a helping hand. I know religion has its dark side, but 15 years passed, that experience really stuck with me. When you're feeling like the world is crap, look to the helpers. I'm paraphrasing and I'm not sure who said it but God strike me down if it isn't true. Was also brought up in the Methodist Church and one of the primary tenets that I love which is found in almost every congregation I have visited is to love everyone. Methodists go hard in the paint for, good works, get your butt out in the world and do good stuff for Jesus don't just talk about it bringing in non-believers and those in a crisis of faith to the flock, everyone is welcome no matter where you are at on your journey, because of the next thing I'm about to mention, the church means nothing, your body is the temple and your personal relationship with God is important above all else. It's why even after my time as an atheist it was easy to find God again and easy to find my community again. My mother was going through a really tough time dealing with her sad years ago, a co-worker invited her to church, and it really changed her life. I'm really happy she found religion because I can see how much it means to her, even though I personally am not religious. I was raised atheist and became a Christian at 19. I met a group of people through friends who seemed genuinely to care about others. They volunteered with elderly and fed the homeless, but also the kind of people who would sit quietly with you while you're going through a tough time. Or drop off food to someone grieving. Or buy a used van for a struggling single dad. I could write an essay on all the ways they helped me and other people for nothing in return except friendship, they didn't even collect tithes at their church, encouraging people to donate their tithe to bigger initiatives that could help more people. I was so impacted by the way they lived in service to others that I began exploring Christianity. The thought of being part of a group that tries to make others' lives better seemed way more meaningful than how I had been living. I learned about Christianity slash God in an environment that encouraged hard questions, debate, studying for yourself and showing care for everyone. It disturbs me deeply that many people use Christianity as an excuse for doing terrible things. I feel like this is how Jesus would want Christianity to be. It's also, why I have such a hard time finding a church to call home. It's rare. Insultingly rare. I'm 54, raised in a Christian church, have been a Christian forever. I'm still searching for that elusive church family. That's exactly what he wants people to do and how he wants them to be. His entire life he did just what those people did. He went around and helped people. He rebuked the churches of the day and ate with the rejects of society because that's who the world doesn't think is good enough but God knows they are good enough. Interestingly enough, my humanist slash atheist friends pulled me out of a religious conservative upbringing because they behaved in the manner you're describing, whereas I saw a lot of judgment from my Christian peers. For me, it was moving to Utah. Born and raised Mormon, and when I got there and saw how horribly rotten the culture becomes when it's the predominant religion in an area, it just changed me. Opened my eyes to looking at how communities behaved when nobody else was looking, and as a result turned me off to religion forever. 
My great uncle was a lifelong atheist until his wife of 50 years died. She was always begging him to go to church and he would never go with her. When she died, he was so devastated he started going to church to feel closer to her. That naturally resulted in him converting. He loved and missed her so much that he was willing to believe anything that would reunite them. He was a tough man but her death broke him. He always gave me crap for not going to church and it annoyed me but I respected how deeply he loved my aunt. On occasion, I would go with him and he was grateful I humored him. My father did this exact same thing after my mom passed. For the first 31 years of my life, the man never went to church. My mom, on the other hand, went every week and was a very active volunteer for them helping with all of their community events and fundraisers. After she passed, my dad started going every week. As an atheist, I absolutely love the community that church slash temple slash synagogue slash mosque offer. Human beings need to be around each other and need social connection. Religious institutions offer community, support, and a sense of belonging. I 100% understand why seniors especially turn to religion in their later years. We lost a dear friend recently. He was devoutly, but privately Muslim. None of his friends are Islamic, and most aren't practicing anything at all. The local Islamic center had never met him, but welcomed us when we approached them as he passed. Their staff and volunteers still saw to it that the rituals were honored for him, a couple dozen of his unmet brothers doing what we could not rightly do for him. It was really powerful for me, as a confident and content non-believer, that sense of community makes the whole scene make more sense to me. Edit, woke up this morning surprised at the response here. So glad that it touched others the way it touched me. It changes none of my beliefs, but it might perhaps help me and others understand religiosity better. Thank you for the awards, and may we all elevate our station. Some of the sentiments are universal and beautiful. Really, touching and well described. Thank you. This is one of the best things I've gotten to read, thank you for sharing. Yep in Islam, the community has a duty to pray the Janiyah prayer, prayer made after the person has passed away. If everyone in that community misses that prayer then the whole community will get sin for not attending. When I was in college, I started going to Mass several times a week and I almost became a Catholic. I loved the sense of community. I made friends, we'd hang out afterwards and have dessert, play games, etc. It really helped when I was a lonely college kid who didn't really fit in with a lot of people. I really feel this. I moved out of an abusive household to go to university the other side of the country. Found it hard to make friends as I'm on the spectrum, so I started going to the local church which happened to be a Catholic one. It was nice to have that routine, social life, friendly faces who remembered your name but were separate from the university life that never suited me. I did convert at the end, to convert you have to complete a course, and I loved those evenings. I want to believe, but I found faith the hardest part. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.